morning, this beautiful Mother's Day. Uh, we have we have a little bit of rain outside, but it's been a nice day so far for me. At least. I don't know about you guys. I uh, pray that God will just bless you and encourage you. And we thank all the mothers mothers that are here. Uh, we'll have something special for you later, but we don't want to. We're sure glad that you're here, and we want to honor you guys, or you ladies. Um, Lord, we pray right now that you would just pour your blessing over this place, Lord God, that from this moment forward, Lord, we would look to you in this time of, of reflecting and prayer and worship, Lord God, that you would just guide us in your goodness and in your love, Lord God, to be uh, more than what we've been before, be in your grace and in your goodness, Lord Jesus. Guide us as we pursue you, Lord God, in your holy name of prayer. Amen. Amen.
one more last song, and I want you just to dig in deep to God's presence right now.
things may have happened and everything that worked. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this offering. We bring it back unto you and lift it up for you to further your ministry in Jesus' name. Do you have any bullets to read? The baccalaureate tonight over at the uh, Mac Center is at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock tonight, that's for the graduation. We'll have no services here tonight. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Good morning. I just want to thank the pastor and the uh, singers and musicians this morning for leading us into the truth of the gospel. It was beautiful. And reminding us who you, we can be in you, in Christ Jesus. I mean, who we can be in Christ Jesus, and what we have. Uh, we're going to be doing communion. Um, gentlemen, if you'll get ready to pass out the elements. Uh, one thing that was on my heart this morning, and I, I made that statement that I felt like the Lord was saying, is because you need to take this communion with your heart ready and prepared to receive Christ, his body, his blood, to receive that. If there's anything in, within you right now that's a distraction or, or God has brought, maybe your Holy Spirit has brought to mind, please take it and lay it before Christ before we enter into this. We practice an open communion. Um, and let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and start passing out the elements. I'm going to be reading, I guess it's my favorite, <laughs> uh, from the Gospel of Matthew concerning the communion, because it's the best one I think there is. Because <laughs> it gets it very precisely and concisely. Did you need something? Can you break it down? what the bread represents and the wine represents. For Absolutely. Them. Yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Let me go ahead and get started. Jesus did what no other being could do. He was God's only son. He was a pure, holy sacrifice. Not just any man or body could be crucified and bring salvation to the world. It had to be through a holy, righteous Son of God. The body, the bread represents the body. It represents his body. He was beaten. Uh, he was tormented. He was treated as the worst you could ever say. They, they say that when his body was on that cross, you couldn't even recognize his face anymore, what he was. He was just in, matted in blood and had been going through a lot. It, the scripture tells us that on his body, he bore our sins. Not just ours, but the whole world's sins. Amen. All mankind's sin. And if he did that, how he must have loved us and cared about us. The cup represents his holy blood shed on the cross and it was later poured out on the mercy seat in heaven. His blood was covered the mercy seat. So when God looked down on that mercy seat, all he saw was the blood of his son. That blood is Amen. there, yeah. eternal. It's covering sins of mankind forever. He, that blood helps us to be able to be received as righteous and holy in God's eyes. Okay? Um, that is there any questions? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Everybody get um, a piece of the bread and the wine. So I just spill it over. 
Um, let's see. This Kevin, Brother Kevin, would you say the blessing over the bread, please? Okay, wait, let me read the scripture. Here's what they were doing. It was before Jesus was crucified. The disciples and Jesus were gathering for the Passover feast. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Eat, take and eat. This is my body. Would you pray over this? Heavenly Father, again, we come thankful to your house today, God, to remember you. Yes. For what you laid down your life for us and for the grave. Yes. Representing your body for body stripes or healed. We put our faith and trust in you and believe your word. Okay, we take the bread together. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, excuse me, drink from it, all of you. All of you, not just you or you, all of you, all of us are to drink. And remember this. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day that I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Um, let's see. Would you like to do the, the contest? Yes. Lord, I pray, Lord, that this cup would be Annoying, Lord God, as we, we come together and we represent, Lord God, everything that you've done for us. We think back on, reflect on the truth of your promise and how it came to fruition, Lord God, when you, you hung there on the cross and you poured out your blood over us, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you would just encourage us to remember daily, to understand the greatness of what has happened for us and how our sin has been taken away from us, Lord God, completely. We thank you for this promise, Lord Jesus. Guide us in our pursuit of you, Lord God. In yes, your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. We take the cup together. I would like you to take a few minutes right now and maybe continuing on during the day to remember why we do this. We do this in remembrance of why Christ died on the cross. He didn't do it just because he was politically, um, whatever, tried and uh, found guilty. He, even if they hadn't found him guilty, the Lord would have made a pathway where he could do this because it was all in God's plan. He wanted us to be healed. He wanted us to be set free. He wanted us to be in communication with him and all of our children and our families. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. By the blood of the Lamb, we have forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. I didn't do that. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Now we're awake. Yes. Somebody must have messed with the game a little bit. Uh, well, if you weren't woke up by the powerful worship and uh, Amen. That was beautiful. And the beautiful uh, communion we just had. And you're awake now, for sure. <laughs> um, I want to thank you guys for being here. Uh, we, we want to honor our mothers. I think we'll do it as we go out. So if you got you ladies, I'm going to make you stick around for the entire <laughs> sermon. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I just don't want to have to get all the guys out of their, their tucked away spots again. Um, but then uh, at the end, I'll give a little blessing. So we'll, we'll have a little bit of time for you guys. So I want to pull up our uh, message for today. And if you guys want to pull in the scriptures, Philippians uh, 4, 4 through 7. It's a very common passage. I'm sure you guys have come across it. Um, how, how many of you guys enjoyed hearing my, my father speak last week while I was out? Did you? It was different, yeah. He's, He's excited, great. right? Yes. I love, I love him. He's so great. He's uh, 
a different style of preacher than I am, but uh, we, we preach the same gospel. Amen. And I love hearing him preach, and so we hope that you guys did too. Um, so, as many of you are aware, I got to take a quick vacation over these uh, this last weekend. That's why I wasn't here. <laughs> um, and I apologize if I created any chaos in my wake. <laughs> but I did get a nice time with God. I was, uh, it was a joy to take part in, uh, to take part in more, in more than one way or, uh, because I got to just feel the blessings of that God had provided for me. I got to live in the moment, know that God had guided me to the time of rest, right? Amen. So we often disvalue or look down on our everyday time. We lose sight on the incredible moments God places before us. Sorry, let's, let's let the kids go out. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Thank you for grabbing them. Um, we lose track of those incredible moments God places before us. Even those that might be the most insignificant might be viewed with a great rejoicing. We never know the place that God will choose to place a lesson before us. We never know those moments when God's going to choose to teach us something in, in that, that, that time period. We have to be constantly looking and rejoicing in His goodness. So today we're celebrating the women who raised us, right? The Mother's, mother's Day is a day of remembering those women who have always been there. The women we didn't always choose, <laughs> but the ones that God placed before us, put us in our way. When I was a little uh, little kid and missionary, my parents were missionaries on the field, when we were in Argentina, I may have told you guys this story before, but uh, they have a different Mother's Day there, it's on a different date. Father's Day is the same, but Mother's Day, there was a different date. So guess what we did in our household? We celebrated both Mother's Day, <laughs> as we should, right? Uh, uh, it, was, it was fun to do that. And, uh, my, my mom was like, hey, we should celebrate both times. <laughs> my dad, obviously, since there was only one Father's Day, it was the same. Uh, didn't feel like it was uh, uh, exactly even, but <laughs> we did it anyways. Most mothers, women, would prefer to every day feel that honor and gratitude that they feel in the state. Right? Yes. Right. It's nice getting that feedback, that continued connection. The relationship is stronger because of it. When we, when we express our gratitude, when we express encouragement to our mothers, that relationship grows, right? We feel the, feel the, the connection grows closer together. When we acknowledge our mothers more often, they know they have a greater value, and we know how much they mean to us. Amen. It's something special. So today we're going to look at this passage in Philippians uh, 4. And it says this. I'm going to read it real quick. Starting in verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord. We don't do that some of the time. We do it always, right? Amen. It's easy for us to get distracted by life's worries and cares, but the continual practice of rejoicing keeps us ahead of our struggle. Amen. We are always rejoicing for what God has done, but also what God will do. Amen. He's going to do more things for us. Amen. We rejoice because we know He's doing greater things for us than we can even imagine. Amen. We continue to thank Him for it, have joy in it. We, we don't do it because God needs it. Yeah. Not because... We, uh, we allow ourselves more time, sorry, no, because we allow ourselves more time to build our relationship with God. So it's not because He needs it, it's because we allow ourselves time to build our relationship with Him. But who are we to know the needs of God? But, on the other hand, we are given the understanding of God's will. So we know what He wants us to do, right? Mm -hmm. He starts to give us that pathway that He's taking us on. We are given 
his plans, opening, uh, opening up for us like, like a book, deeper and more interesting the more we read. You know, those first few chapters just kind of lay the groundwork, right? But as we leave deeper, the story unfolds before us. God's opening up a book for us. The process comes through the revelation of our mediator, the person of the Holy Spirit. So that process of growth and opening up of God, our understanding and relationship with God comes through the work of the Holy Spirit. But it takes us doing our part, giving over to God's will and plan for us. We constantly rejoice in whatever the immediate outcome because we know the eventual outcome. We rejoice in the immediate outcome knowing that we're going to get to the eventual outcome. That's eternity. That's our spirit connected with God for all existence and infinitely. We don't take time off, we continue. We don't take time off, we continue. Every moment with God allows for us to have an even greater breakthrough. We must persevere in our pursuit. We have to keep going. It's not just that we praise all the time, but we continue to praise all the time. Right? We keep going. We don't lose track of, of our joy or our rejoicing in who God is. To rejoice is to continue resiliently. We continue in this without ceasing. We continue on. So now, let's, look, let's break down this passage. All right? So this is our Philippians 4, 4, 7. And the first thing I want you to get from this passage is that we need to be gentle to all. Be gentle to all. The word here, used here, and, and, and was translated in the uh, English Standard Version, which I use as reasonable, um, but it's also was translated as gentle. The word epikis, I'm not great at reading Greek, I'm sorry, means forbearing spirit gentleness. A forbearing spirit gentleness. This is a spirit that is both patient and restrained, putting up the faults of others with a great kindness. Right? It's being good despite the behavior of others. Acting in love when others burst in anger. If we were mad at you, frustrated, you act in love, you're kind to them, you have sympathy for their, their opinions, even though they're wrong. <laughs> they have sympathy for their opinions. Right? You act kindly to them. You don't try to uh, push, push your judgmental force onto them you act in compassion and help them understand. Mm -hmm. Acting in love when others burst in anger. So part of rejoicing is the spreading of this joy. We can't spread joy selectively without care. We can't like so say, oh, you know, I'm going to start rejoicing in this moment, but this is the only group of people that I'm going to rejoice with. Right? We have to do it all the time. We have to. We can't select the areas that we rejoice. We have to do it everywhere. We listen to the process, that God, the process that God has laid before us. In Titus 3, 1 and 2, it says, Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. This is part of our obedience to God, not man. That our actions will always be righteous, even when we are challenged by others who might breathe that fire, right? <laughs> they come in really hot. Even when we're challenged, we're obedient to God to stay, make our actions righteous. We continue to be gentle and kind. You know, a gentle person does not respond aggressively to road rage. <laughs> this is a hard one for me. This is a person that is kind and courageous. They are not impulsive, but self-controlled. They don't get, react on their own, you know, feelings all of a sudden. Right? They don't act without thinking and don't speak without having to question these things before God. So they, they, they speak what they know is true. Sometimes we're challenged by things in our life that we don't necessarily know the answer to. But we have to act in that gentle, loving care and let God speak through us and search the scriptures. Let the Spirit move within us. If we're not questioning to God, if we're trying to come up with our own answer, 
That's when we lead people astray. Paul describes both his desire for himself as a leader, sorry, describes this as both his desire for himself as a leader and the overseer of the seers. He describes him as being, needing to be gentle. In, first, I'm sorry, in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 1, it says, I, Paul, myself, entreat you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, I who am, who am humble when face to face with you, but bold toward you when I am away. Paul dealt with them in a humility and care. He derives, he, he, he starts this off, this lifestyle, he thinks about this lifestyle as coming from Jesus Christ. It comes from Christ. Right? He sees it in Christ. And we'll get to some scriptures that explain that. But our ultimate example of meekness and humility, that he would arise out of nothing, sorry, he, he's the ultimate example of meekness and humility, that he would arise out of nothing but yet be born to wield the Holy Spirit with power. That is what God calls us to do as well, to follow in those footsteps. The example that Christ created for us. Christ is our example because the life of the Savior was such that we can model ourselves. That's the reason that there's the persons of, of God, right? Christ is our model of, of, he, of how we should live. He's our new Adam. God is the creator of something above everything that we can't even imagine. And the Holy Spirit is our interaction with God all the time. It's described this way for our own thinking so we can understand and be able to live in God's presence. Not that all of, uh, not that an all-powerful God, but a, sorry, Christ is not that all-powerful God, but a caring and gracious God willing to sacrifice and give all things. That's the example we get to live by. In 1 Timothy 3.3, 3, I said that Paul described it as himself. He also described it as something that an overseer should have, right? So he says, the saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. I love that it puts not violent, but gentle. We want to be we want to react with violence sometimes. That's that was like the the thing that disturbed me in 2020 when uh, there was the the height of the BLM movement right in the middle of the pandemic and and, and people were being pushed to violence on both ends. Mm -hmm. They were being pushed to being triggered. There was this word that started to rise called being triggered, right? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a descriptive word of what happens on a gun, right? A yeah. trigger, right? It's violence. We can't be pushed to violence. We have to act gently, right? We have to be very kind and compassionate in our reactions. It's important. It's very important for us, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, this placement opposite violence tells us something important, right? Our, our part is to give and spread the gospel to the world. It's not to force others into God's grace. That honestly doesn't make sense when you look at the word issue. It's not to force people to understand God's grace. It's to present it with kindness and compassion. It's, it is giving the most our, of ourselves, proving that we, like Christ, serve and witness from a sincere heart. We have to serve and witness to other people from a sincere, from the deepest parts of our heart. It's important. Yesterday I had to take back, I, I um, uh, had to go, go take back something that well, didn't fit. <laughs> I went to Home Depot and uh, I got in line and there was, there was a line of people like, yeah, it was kind of widespread, need plenty of space. But if you don't know Home Depot, that the self checkout has a pretty wide aisle because people are, you know, pushing huge carts full of lumber and all sorts of heavy equipment through there. So, uh, so there's plenty of space between each side of the counters, right? So there's there's two here, there's two here. They're probably as as wide as one of these pews from each other, and. Um, so we're, I'm standing in the middle, and there's, there's the cameras are here and here, and there, there's there's a line. So I'm like behind, just a couple guys ahead of me, 
and people start walking up and they're trying to get in because they see, oh, they're not getting in line, obviously. <sighs> they try to push their way in. So we're, we're, you know, the people in the front of the line are, are giving them eyes and, and we're trying to not like say anything, but all of a sudden somebody, one of the people on the counter way over there says, hey, we're open here, and then these people walk off and go over there, I'm like, thank goodness. <laughs> have to talk to these people. <laughs> they were trying to ignore the method and push in. They thought of themselves and whatever it was that was making them busy, which I'm sure they had plenty of excuse to be busy, right? Yes. But they were being pushy, 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 pushy. Yeah. Patience and restraint are key to finding joy. We can change our outlook quickly with just a bit of self-control. When, when we snap, when we snap back we lose our joy. We replace it with hate and anger. We, we push back, we fight back, we just replace it with hate and anger. We lose our joy. Corruption should come from a gentle, loving spirit, and everyone or everyone will lose. So the next one is that we're going to look at is uh, do not be ruled by your anxiety. Do not be ruled by your anxiety. When we let ourselves unravel, we lose sight of our joy. How can we rejoice when we are incapable to think of anything but the problems that we face? It's like tunnel vision, right? We start thinking only of what's right there. We focus in our vision on what is right ahead of us. I used to work at a store. I'm going to try not to tell too many details of this because I'm not sure it's the best story to tell. But I worked at the store. And I had a manager, I was like the shipping advisor, so I had, we, we had a back room, and right as we walked in the door of the back room, my desk was like in this little corner right next to the door, like they would walk right past me. And our, our main boss, our manager, had the smallest tunnel vision you could think of, like she would not focus in on anything and just walk right past me. And I would be sitting right there and be like, hey, I would just try to say something to her, and she would just breeze right by me. It happened several times, and uh, we started to become a thing amongst the staff to, think, to discuss her tunnel vision. Like, she just kept moving past us. She got in mind what she wanted to do, and she went to do it. So, I decided to test it one day. <laughs> See, we, it was a store that we had, we had some clothes we sold, so I, I, we had a mannequin. So I grabbed the mannequin, it's just the shoulders and the arms, and then I got a like coffee can, for some reason we had a coffee can, and I put it on top because we didn't have any heads on any of our mannequins. Um, and I put that inside my hoodie that I wore every day, it was this bright green hoodie, I don't know how she couldn't see me. <laughs> and, then, and then I had like, the, the coffee can, I had this like little fake face that I'd made out of, out of tape and paper uh, when I was born one day, when it was really slow. And I put that, I put the glasses on, I put the hand, the arms of the, the hoodie up on the desk, <laughs> and I just left it there. And, kid you not, this lady walked past it several times and never noticed. <laughs> I feel bad about it because it was probably an immature thing to do, but I was, I was pretty young then. I was in my early 20s. Um, but we can't get focused in so much that we miss some obvious things around us. And the obvious thing is that God is there for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We can't keep focused on what's only in front of us. We need to look to the heavens and know what God has laid before us. He's already placed things ahead of us. We just got to look up to Him. We got to understand where we're going. He's going to take us there. We have to look down so we can't chip on things. But <laughs> we have to look to what God has placed before us. In Matthew uh, 11, 28 through 30, it says this. Come to me, all who are, oh, sorry. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and I will I'll be gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest in your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word that he uses, uh, Paul uses here, the Greek word is marinau. It means to be pulled apart. So that's the word for anxiety, I should say. We find ourselves 
yanked open when we dwell in our anxiety. Instead of being anxious, we must give all of our troubles to God. Amen. We must give everything we have to God. We get lost in ourselves if we let the anxiety take over. In Luke 21, 34 through 36, it says, But watch yourself, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. Christ warns us that carrying the weight of, of this life will trap you. It will trap you. It will trap you. And Isaiah 35, 4 says, Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance and will recompense, uh, and the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Amen. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. The key for overcoming anxiety is rejoicing in our Savior. Prayer and supplication is what our main passage says. We get to sit in in the same space of the Spirit of God and take in all the wisdom He, has, he will share with you, us. We are given freedom from our anxiety because of our pursuit. We have to rejoice. We have to take it in. We can't let ourselves become anxious. It takes us away from God's promise. The last thing is God. God's peace is more than we know. It says God's peace is more than we know. No. The peace of, it says in the passage, verse 7, on the peace of God will surpass all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So God has already provided more than enough peace for your heart. Amen. Give thanks and know he has come through, uh, through for you even before you were aware of it. The call here is to be uh, to the unification of the body. We see often from Paul's writings a charge similar to this. Peace, the unification of all who believe, is greater than any peace we could ponder in our own mind. Anything that we could put to our own thoughts. That peace that God gives is greater. Yeah. It's more than we can know. And Romans 14, 19 says, So then let us pursue what makes for peace, for mutual, uh, sorry, for mutual upbuilding. We can pick each other up if we pursue what gives us peace. This is the deeper relationship with God through the Spirit. So, I love this. is another charge. It's very similar. And we also see in 2 Corinthians 13, 11, Finally, brothers, rejoice, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. If you abide in the area of restoration and care for one another, the outcome is that God's love will, will show you this greater peace. We must place ourselves in a life of peace, practicing encouragement towards others. Ephesians 4, 1 and 3 says, I therefore, a prisoner from the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We act in the right character of humility and gentleness and so that we can all bond in the peace from the Holy Spirit. We can all bond in peace from the Holy Spirit. So let's read our passage again. I want to read it one more time. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace, the peace of God, will surpass all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The goal of this is that our hearts are guarded from our selfish ambitions. 
We rejoice, we give things, we act according to God's will so that we can find conclusion in his peace. So the, the goal of all this is that our hearts are guarded. We would join in, 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 in doing these things together and growing with one another so that we can all be guarded from the enemy. Christ is, that's the benefit of it all, right? Is that we get to experience the, the protection that comes from God because we're acting the way that he wants, he desires, he's placed before us to act. Christ has already set down the groundwork for our freedom in him. The way we act as believers should reflect this so that we might not find ourselves on the outside of God's will. The action of rejoicing is key for us to grow deeper in our faith, for us to know the quality of people we need to be. So I'm going to pray over this. I don't know, a little long, I think, but um, I'm going to pray over this and then we're going to conclude. But I want you to think about, everybody close your eyes. Okay? I want you to think about moments in your life that you know that you need to start rejoicing more, reflecting more on God. Maybe you, you, you tune God out for nine to ten hours a day and then try to pray in the morning at night. Uh, but you just are completely oblivious to where God is the rest of the day. I want to encourage you just to rejoice, to be in God's presence, to recognize that he's there for you in those moments. You can find scriptures. You can apply things to the scriptures you learn in the morning throughout the day. Let God speak to you and, and use you, uh, as you as you walk in your businesses, in your, in your life, with your family, with, your, with, with, with all the places that you might go and shop and do. Let God use you in all those moments because you continue to rejoice. The key, the key for all this is, as I said, this is the benefit, is that we get our hearts guarded. We create a wall. We know that God is guiding and protecting us because we're living within his promise. We're living in his will. Lord God, I pray right now that you would just pour your spirit over us, encourage us, bless us to seek out your truth, to know your will and your way. That nothing would get in our way, not, not anything would just start to block us from understanding what you have for us. Help us to seek out your truth and love and to rejoice all along the way. Knowing that in every time we sing out and we praise and we, 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 we sing words of encouragement or we say words of encouragement, we, we acknowledge your presence, we acknowledge everything that you've done, we give thanks for the actions that you've provided for us, for the salvation that you've given us, Lord God. All those moments help us get closer to you, help us dig in deeper to you, help us lose sight of our problems and help us to... Uh, help, help us to, to give you the knowledge of what, what's going on in our hearts so that you can heal us and make us safe. Guide us in our pursuit of you, Lord Jesus. In your holy name, we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, I'm going to stay up here after, after for, if you guys want prayer for a healing or anything um, going on in your life, but I want to go ahead and acknowledge that we have some gifts to get out from the ladies. And uh, if somebody, some guys can come and help me, I guess we'll hand them out. Actually, if you want to come and get, you get.